Hello, Internet. Welcome to our introduction to Root Data Analysis Framework. So this is lesson zero, setting up what is Root, how do you run it, how do you get it, how do you edit it, and of course a Hello World macro. Now Root is, at its core, C++ libraries and data structures for analysis, technical computing, numerical computing, making fantastic plots, an amazing extension of libraries including neural networks, web development, databases, GUIs, it's all in there. So we start on lesson zero because of course we count with zero in C++. So I started using root back in the year 2000 so I guess I've been using it for about 17 years now. Before that I had one brutal summer experience with PAW, the physics analysis workstation. Now, PA was based on Fortran. Fortran, of course, is still around and will always be with us because when you have code that's hard to write and it works, you're not going to go back and change it. But in the 90s, uh, people at CERN decided to make a revised version that uses C++ instead of Fortran, and Root was born out of that. Root's been developed quite a lot over the years. If you go to the Root website, then you'll find an amazing number of applications for it. I'm also a big fan of what's on the page right now, because if we go through here, my PhD dissertation was making a whole lot of surface plots like this with the STAR experiment at Brookhaven National Lab at the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider, doing some two-particle min bias correlations. So I spent a good chunk of my life writing root code and fitting surfaces that look pretty much exactly like this. All right, so let's do a quick tour of the website and then let's get some root going. So if we click on the documentation tab, two things to notice. First off, the reference guide is not at all where you want to start. That's where if you want to look up specific syntax for a specific command, but you should never navigate here, you should just Google to it. The user's guide and the how-tos, however, are pretty spectacular. Okay, so the user's guide. If we open this one up, here we've got the root user's guide. Now, the first few chapters of this are a pretty nice, pretty detailed introduction, probably more detailed than a beginner would want but reading through the basics through about chapter six or so could be a nice introduction. Uh, beyond that you get into a pretty deep dark forest of details that root beginners probably don't want to go to. The root primer is a shorter version that's probably a much better starting place if you want some documentation. So in fact, this video series will cover basically the same information that you'll get in the root primer, except it's going to be in YouTube form. Last thing from the root documentation, let's never forget the fantastic how-tos. All right, there's a lot of really, really useful things in here that have saved me a fair amount of time over the years. So if you need to do something specific, these root how-tos can be a great place to start. So if I need to learn how to invert a matrix, looking at this code is going to be a really fast way to get there. It's much, much, much easier to program by copy and paste example, like we'll be doing in these video series, instead of trying to write some code from scratch by looking up reference manuals. All right, so you'll want to keep those pages bookmarked and handy because they are a pretty fantastic way to go. All right, so let's talk about getting root. So if we go to download and supported platforms, what we're going to see is that the latest root version, version 6, is very easy for Linux and OS X. If you are a Windows user, like I've got this Windows laptop here, our life is going to be a little more difficult getting started. So I'm under the assumption that if you're a Linux user, you don't need any help from me. Everything will be great going. If you're a Mac user, then downloading the root version 6 should work fine. But let's go through how to do this for Windows. Okay, so root version 5 does in fact have some Windows support. 
So to get this for Windows, what I'm going to do is come down to Download All Releases. The 5.99s don't have the pre-compiled Windows yet, but if I click on, say, this 5.34, and I can scroll down here, what you want to do is get the .exe version, not the .zip version. Uh, for these videos, it won't really matter if you're getting the debug exe or the normal exe. You will want to get the same version as Visual Studio that you have if you have it. It tends to be installed with other things. Uh, one quick way to check is just to pop up a window here, type in Visual Studio, and I see that I've got Visual Studio 2010 on my computer, and so this is the version that I would go with if I hadn't already had it installed. All right, so now we're going to assume that you've got it downloaded and installed and you are ready to work. Let's talk about how to fire it up. Now, for people who aren't experienced in working with the Linux environment, we need to talk about some details here that you might not be used to, and that is the idea of kind of a relative search path. So here's the thought. If I go run Microsoft Word, I don't care where the Microsoft Word program is executing from. I'll tell it what file to open and what file to save, and that's all Word needs to know. It's a little bit different with code. What I want to do with root is have a directory somewhere that has my root code in it. Then I want to launch root from that directory so it can find the files easily and quickly without having to give everything a painful long search path. So when you've got root installed, whether you're a Mac user or a Windows user, you really don't want to start it from the program menu. That's a pretty painful mistake. So instead what you want to do is run it from the command line like we're in a Linux environment. So let me show you how this works out. So if I go to my C drive, I've got this root directory that has all of the root code in it. Let's make a little place for us to work. So I'm just going to type in a new folder and let's do intro 2017. So I've got a place that I can work now. So what I want to do is open up a command prompt. Uh, most Windows users have never used something like this before, but it's a good habit to get into. So I've made my font unpleasantly large, so hopefully you can see it. So now all I've got to do is cd backslash into root and there's all the root files and let's go into my intro 2017. So from here all I need to do is type in root and the root lady should pop up and we should be good to go. Again you can see because I'm using a Windows pre-compiled binary I am on root 5. We're not going to be using any advanced features in these tutorials so it really doesn't matter what root version that you've got. So now here I get the root prompt. Now from here, this is a C++ interpreter. So I can type in any line of C++ code and it's automatically going to execute and run for me. So I could do C out and we could do hello world end line and that works. I could say integer x, x equals 5 x equals 2 times 234 and I can run code from here but typing in every single line every single time you run root is painful so the last part of this setup is to get a root macro up and running okay so for this part we are going to need a text editor now a couple of good options here so the standard ones in the Unix world are VI and Emacs. I am a longtime Emacs user. I love it. It is the best program for writing code. It's, however, a little harder to get started with than other versions that you might want to use. Now, VI is amazing program if you're running 1960s technology. 
There is absolutely no reason to learn it now. If you know it, you should seriously think about what series of life choices brought you to this point. Because VI is pretty much a tool of the devil. If VI accidentally starts in your computer, type colon Q. If that doesn't work, try colon Q exclamation point. And if that doesn't work, power off your computer immediately. And if it happens again, just throw your hard drive into the fire. Now, Emacs has a pretty amazing feature set for writing code. It's also got a text version, so if you're SSH'd into a server somewhere, Emacs will run just fine. Also, I like to show off the Emacs help options. It's got a lot of fantastic things, tutorials, facts, news, and of course, Eliza, our psychotherapist. So if you've got some existential crisis, you can always pop that up in Emacs. Now, if this is a little too intense, you are always welcome to start off with some other choices. Uh, Sublime is an incredibly popular, feature-rich environment. But let me suggest, if you need a good one, uh, Notepad++. I've been using this a fair bit lately. It's really fast and lightweight, does really good things with code. So if you're a complete uh, beginner, if this is brand new to you, Notepad++ is a really good way to go. So you can just pop, pop open a Google window, Notepad++ Windows download, or Emacs Windows download, and you can get that up and running. Okay, so I'm going to be using Emacs because that's what I'm most comfortable with. And in fact, I often try to run Emacs commands in Microsoft Word, leading to hilarious results. Okay, so I'm going to open up a file. So I've been working in root intro 2017. And let's do our hello world. Whenever I write a root macro, you want to end this in a dot capital C. That's going to be the standard extension that says this is a uncompiled root macro that's C++ code. Okay. So now from here, what I could do is take any line of code and bring it into my macro. But let's start off with just the simplest, shortest, and easiest possible thing to do. So I'm going to open brace, and I'm going to type C out, hello world. Notice that Emacs has gratefully done the syntax highlighting for me. So when my quote is open, it's red, and when I close it, it turns colors. Okay, and then I'll do an inline. It's automatically indented because I know I'm inside an open brace, and I'll close it, and I'll save. So like we were saying before, you need to be running root from the same directory where this macro is. So I've saved this in my root intro 2017, and I am here in my root intro 2017 directory. So when I type root, now we're going to execute it. Now the next trick is something that beginners get wrong all of the time, and it drives me pretty crazy. So let's talk about tab completion. The best way to make sure that you are doing things right and not messing up, and the best way to be lazy and efficient and get more work done and be lazy is to press tab and let it complete everything for you. Okay, so from within the root prompt, I could type dot question mark and I could get all the various help, but we really only need to know two commands, dot x to execute, dot q to quit. So dot q quits, I type in root, dot x executes. So now what I'm going to do, instead of typing hello dot c, no, 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 that's a waste of time. I'm going to type h and I'm going to press tab and it's going to give me some options. So now I'm going to do the next letter, so h e and I'll press tab and it will autocomplete for me by searching files. If it doesn't autocomplete for you, that means you're in the wrong directory. Okay, I press enter, it says hello world. So now I've got a place that I can save code, 
and it's going to work really easily for us. So in this introduction, we talked a little bit about what Root is. Now, the biggest reasons to use Root these days, there's two of them. One is you're working in a physics experiment, and Root's what everything's written in. But Root's also migrated out to a large number of other fields. If you need to do some computing, you need to make some graphs or some plots or do a calculation, Root's really good for that. And this brings us to reason number two. Root can do the same sorts of computations you can do with MATLAB or Mathematica or Maple, but Root is, of course, completely free. So if you don't want to spend a few thousand dollars on software, you can just use root if you want to. We went through the download process. Windows users have a few more steps to go through. We need a good text editor for our program, like Notepad++ or Emacs. And we've got the ability to write and run macros from our window. All right, next time we'll do lesson one, and we'll actually start writing some code.